Hey everyone. So in last lecture, we saw the motivation to study in a product space. Okay, so we saw the definition and why. What are the reasons that one study in a product? Okay, so today we are going to see some examples. So what is an inner product? So it's a function. So if you have a vector space V, so suppose V is a vector space over real numbers, then inner product is a function from V cross V to R. Okay, so it will take two vectors from the vector space. and you should able to define a function on those two vectors so that your output is a real number okay and if that function satisfies this five properties then we say that that function is an inner product on the vector space v and in such scenario we call v to be a inner product space okay so what are the functions what are the conditions your function should satisfy so that it can be called as an inner product the first is called as a linearity so it should be linear in the first variable so this addition gets split where u v w are the vectors in v second is scalar multiple property the lambda is a real number you should be able to take out outside the function next is called as a symmetry property that you find the inner product of v u v or v u you should get the same answer if you are playing with the vector space or complex numbers in that case here you will get this conjugate symmetry okay in that case here you have that complex number bar okay but okay since i am concentrating on real number so this bar will not come because there is no imaginary part in real numbers but just a word of caution if you are playing over complex numbers then here this property instead of calling it as a symmetry property we call it as a conjugate symmetry property the next is called as positive definite it is always greater equal 0 u comma u and inner product is 0 if and only if the vector is 0 okay so these are the properties that the function should satisfy in order to be eligible for an inner product so let us start with a vector space r2 with usual addition and scalar multiplication and let me define inner product so if i take any two vectors say x bar and y bar where what is my x bar my x bar let me write it over here my x bar is a vector x1 x2 and my y bar is a vector y1 y2 i'm defining the inner product of two vector as the dot product x bar dot product with y bar this is nothing but x1 y1 plus x2 y2 you do component wise multiplication so x bar and y bar are vectors of r2 yes the dot product is this a real number yes because x1 y1 x2 y2 all are real numbers so dot product or this is a function from r2 cross r2 because it is taking two vectors as an input and your output is a real number so you can write in any of the ways to prove the properties so like let's go for the first one in that case this is much more convenient because what will be inner product of x bar plus z bar comma y bar this is nothing but x bar plus z bar dot product with y bar but you have studied in your high school that the dot product goes inside this is x bar dot y bar plus z bar dot y bar but what is this inner product of x bar comma y bar inner product of z bar comma y bar so x bar y bar z bar y bar it gets split so the first linearity property gets satisfied now let's go for some other properties what was the another property another property was i think it was the scalar property what is inner product of lambda x bar comma y bar this is nothing but lambda into x bar dot product with y bar but lambda is a number so this is lambda x bar dot y bar this is lambda what is this x bar comma y bar so you can see the lambda comes outside so even the scalar property is satisfied what about symmetry it is also satisfied right because what is this this is x bar dot y bar that is if you want you can write in this way x1 y1 plus x2 y2 but these two are real numbers so x1 y1 is same as y1 x1 and this is same as y2 x2 but what is this this is y bar dot product with x bar and what is this this is inner product of y bar x bar so even symmetricity is satisfied okay what was the next property the next property is non negativity 
इनर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एक्स बार एक्स बार वट इज दिस इट इज एक्स बार डॉट एक्स बार विच इज नथिंग बट एक्स वन स्क्वेर प्लस एक्स टू स्क्वेर एंड ऑब्वियसली यूर एक्स वन स्क्वेर इज ऑलवेज ग्रेटर इक्वल जीरो एक्स टू स्क्वेर इज ऑल्सो नॉन नेगेटिव एडिशन ऑफ टू नॉन नेगेटिव नंबर इज ऑलवेज नॉन नेगेटिव ओके वट वॉज द लॉस प्रॉपर्टी इन अ प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो इफ एन ओनली इफ द वैक्टर इज जीरो इन अ प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो इफ एन ओनली इफ वॉट इज इन अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एक्स बार एक्स बार इट इज एक्स वन स्क्वेर प्लस एक्स टू स्क्वेर बट दिस इज नॉन नेगेटिव दिस इज ग्रेटर इक्वल जीरो दिस इज ग्रेटर इक्वल जीरो सो बोथ हैज टू बी जीरो दे कैन बी पॉजिटिव बिकॉज इवन इफ वन ऑफ देम इज पॉजिटिव एडिशन विल बी पॉजिटिव बट सिंस द एडिशन इज जीरो सो दिस इज इफ एंड ओनली इफ एक्स वन स्क्वेर इज जीरो एंड एक्स टू स्क्वेर इज जीरो बट एक्स वन स्क्वेर इज जीरो मीन्स एक्स वन इज जीरो एक्स टू स्क्वेर इज जीरो मीन्स एक्स टू इज जीरो सो एक्स वन एंड एक्स टू बोथ आर जीरो दैट मीन्स वॉट इफ एंड ओनली इफ योर एक्स बार इज अ जीरो वैक्टर सो एक्स बार इज अ जीरो वैक्टर इफ एंड ओनली इफ बोथ द कंपोनेंट्स आर जीरो इफ एंड ओनली इफ दिस इज जीरो इफ एंड ओनली इफ द इनर प्रोडक्ट इज जीरो so as we have seen in a product if i define the inner product of two vectors as a dot product on r2 then it do forms a inner product therefore your r2 with respect to usual addition and scalar multiplication and with this inner product this quadruplet forms an inner product space okay so this is one thing now another there is a one nice observation that one should understand i mean one can ask that are there any more inner products answer is yes one can define infinitely many inner products okay but for that i want you to make this nice observation see this is one way to write the dot product what is another way we already wrote or you can write x1 y1 plus x2 y2 you can write this as x1 x2 row vector y1 y2 column vector matrix multiplication this row into this column x1 y1 plus x2 y2 so what is this this is x transpose y so this is the dot product and this is normal matrix multiplication product because x transpose is a row vector y bar is a column vector so this is a normal matrix multiplication so you can also write your dot product as this matrix multiplication this is the first observation okay now here uh i will come back to this again okay but before coming back to this again let me give you one homework problem okay you have to show that if i take inner product of x bar y bar on r2 itself if i take this as 2x1 y1 plus 3x2 y2 then this also forms an inner product okay this is first homework second if i take x bar y bar as suppose 7x1 y1 plus say 9x2 y2 then you show that this also forms an inner product so that's the homework for you but now one can ask okay so if i keep on changing the numbers will i always get the inner product answer is no if i define inner product as x bar y bar as 2x1 y1 minus 2x2 y2 then this do not forms an inner product on r2 you have to tell me which condition will fail okay so this forms an inner product this forms an inner product but this do not forms an inner product okay so what is the mystery okay so i will tell you one nice way to look at this okay so see when it was the coefficient was 1 over here what i said you write that as x transpose y bar right the matrix multiplication but now you have 2 and 3 now here see this is x1 x2 if i multiply by identity matrix 1 0 0 1 into y1 y2 not a problem because this is identity matrix this is same as your x1 y1 plus x2 y2 not an issue here how can i rewrite in terms of matrix multiplication well the answer is this is x1 x2 if you want you can pause the video and think okay this is nothing but 2 0 0 3 y1 y2 
so this is nothing but x transpose a y so this in the product i can write it in this way x bar trans x transpose a into y and again you can verify the property in this way what is the first one in a product of x plus z comma y that will be x plus z transpose a into y but what is x plus z transpose it is x transpose plus z transpose and then you do take that multiplication inside you get the answer so if you write in this way proving in a product is very easy okay so question is for what a what kind of matrices this will form an inner product well the answer is you take a to be a symmetric matrix with positive two eigen values because this is a two cross two matrix so if your a is a symmetric matrix with two positive eigen values then such inner product then such a function will always form an inner product okay so you take infinitely many matrices here now this is the diagonal matrix so this is symmetric because this entries are same you can have infinitely many numbers because these are the eigen values so take any two n positive eigen values two positive eigen values it will always form an inner product on r2 okay so that's the thing and earlier if you remember it was 2 and minus 2 so those were not positive and that's why it will not form an inner product so now you have infinitely many examples of inner product on r2 okay because i have i have seen many times when i say given example of inner product on r2 they will say take the dot product good if i ask them give me one more example then students keep on thinking and they will say i don't know okay so but this is a trick that one really helps to give infinitely many inner products okay now the same thing works for r3 you take x bar and y bar x bar will be x1 x2 x3 y bar will be y1 y2 y3 again take the dot product x1 y1 plus x2 y2 plus x3 y3 that is the standard dot product if you want one more take 2 times x1 y1 plus 3 times x2 y2 plus 7 times x3 y3 again you can write it as x transpose a y again the same result holds whenever your a is a symmetric matrix with three positive eigen values then that will always form an inner product on r3 and if you want a function to be not an inner product take same like just take the opposite sign 2 minus 2 and 2 and on the diagonal matrix so therefore it will not form an inner product okay so same thing for r4 r5 and so on so now i hope you know an infinitely many families of inner products and non inner products on r2 r3 r4 and so on if you have any doubt till here you can ask me in the comment section okay so this was about r2 r3 r4 and rn what is the next family you study you study the family of polynomials suppose if i take p2 of x polynomials of degree at most 2 okay so if i take say two polynomials p of x and q of x let me define this as minus 1 to 1 p of x into q of x then this forms an inner product is there anything special about 1 no even if it is minus 2 to 2 minus 3 to 3 minus 4 to 4 minus pi to pi it will form an inner product so this forms an infinite class of inner products another way you can define p of x comma q of x you define this as p of minus 1 into q of minus 1 plus p of 0 into q of 0 plus p of 1 into q of 1 polynomials of degree at most 2 then this also forms an inner product again is there anything special about minus 1 0 1 1 if i change what will happen so well this i have already proved in my another lecture link you will find in the description and there i have answered all these questions so i'm not going to prove it again i will post the link in the description you have a look okay so again we have infinitely many examples and non examples of inner products on polynomial space okay and now the comes the last family which is nothing but the set of all matrices okay so if i take m 2 cross 3 matrices with entries as real numbers one can define the standard inner products that many people use and it's always also used in many applications you take ab transpose and you take the trace of that matrix you take the trace of ab transpose okay so 
this also forms an inner product well this is actually nothing but we are doing the component wise multiplication you just do this multiplication and you get a square matrix again this satisfies the properties of inner product and this also i have proved in another lecture so for that also link is there in the description so make sure you see the proof that why this forms an inner product on collection of all matrices and again there is nothing special about 2 and 3 it can be any m cross n matrix okay so these are all the examples and non examples of inner products so i hope you understood this if you have any function in which you are having a doubt whether that forms an inner product or not you can ask me in the comment section thank you